In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use this awesome plugin for SketchUp called Skimp. And you can bring in high quality 3D models along with its textures, materials and more. Towards the end of the video, I will also be showing you how to create this simple studio render using the high quality models that we brought in. Before I head to the video, if you want access to Skimp, that is a 30% offer which is going on and you will find it in the description below. Now without further ado, let's jump straight to the video. Alright, to start off, you can click on the link in the description and open the Skimp website. Skimp is a plugin made by this company called Mindsight Studios and they have a lot of other cool plugins as well which you can check out. So Skimp is a simple plugin which helps bring in high quality 3D models. What do I mean by high quality? Basically models which have a lot of polygons in them and it would be rather heavy if you bring it directly into SketchUp using the file import option. So we use Skimp instead and you can bring in the model, adjust the polygon count and a whole lot more which we would be showing you shortly. So to install Skimp, all you need to do is click on try it free and you can click on add to cart. Now you can click on accept. You can click on checkout, put in your details. You can opt in for the news and special offers if you'd like. Click on next and click on submit order. So now you'll get an email with the license key for your 30 day trial. So this is the mail which we get and we also get the trial license key. So now we need to download the Skimp RBC file. So click on go to my purchase and then click on continue to download Skimp. And finally you can click on download Skimp RBC. So now it would download a Skimp RBC file which you need to install into SketchUp. So open SketchUp, go to Windows and click on extension manager, click on install extension. Select the Skimp file and click on open. So once you install Skimp, it would show up as a toolbar here. If it doesn't show up, you can go to view toolbars. Scroll to the bottom and switch on Skimp. And now you need to add in your license. So click on import model. It would show that a valid license could not be found. Press OK. And now you can click on add license. Add in your email and copy the license key which you received in your mail. And click on activate license. So now we have a trial license which is valid for 5 days. So now I'm going to show you how to use Skimp and we're going to import two models. Now before I import two models, I'm going to open my studio scene. So go to file open, select Z underscore studio. Now if you want access to this studio file, you can check the link in the description and download it from there. So click on open. So this is our studio and now we're going to bring in our models and also render it out in our studio. Alright, now it's time to use our Skimp plugin. So before I import any model, I'm going to click on the settings here. So click on settings and I'm going to switch on apply UV texture and also click on maintain UVs and maintain normals. So this way, if I bring in a model, I can maintain the UVs in that model. And if I apply any texture, it would apply uniformly on those UV surfaces. So press OK after you've made sure you switched on apply UV texture and maintain UVs as well. So click on OK. And now click on import model to import your models and I'm going to import a chair. So these kind of models are slightly more complex. It would be difficult to model them in SketchUp with the basic tools. So that's one of the reasons why we use Skimp and bring in these complex models. So you can either select 3ds, obj or fbx. I'm going to select obj as it works best. So select obj and click on open. And now we can drag this simplify slider to the right. So what it does is it simplifies the model and reduces the polygon, which in turn reduces the size of your SketchUp file as well. Now if you keep it at 100%, it would bring in all the polygons and faces, which you don't really require. You can keep it around 20 to 15% or even 30%, depending on how complex you want your model to be. So I'm going to keep it at 20%. I'm going to leave the rest of the settings as is. You can also rotate it if you like, but it's not really required. You just simply need to click on import. So wait for a bit for the model to get imported into SketchUp. And now it's brought in the model. So I'm just going to place this in the center of my scene using the move tool and also rotate it. If you want to learn how to use the basic tools in SketchUp, you can check out my free SketchUp basics course on YouTube. All right. So now we need to apply the material. As you can see, since I switched on apply UV texture and maintain UVs, it's maintain the UVs of this model. So all these are UVs and they are normal to the face. So if I bring in any material, it would apply uniformly and correctly on the model. So to apply a texture, if this model has a texture, you can click on this replace texture tool 
And now you need to hold control on your keyboard. It would change to this plus icon here and bring in a new texture. So you need to click on the model and it would open this dialog box where you can select the texture for this model. So go to textures, I'm going to select textile, click on open. So now you can see that it's applied properly on the model and I need to apply my wooden legs as well. So again, hold control on your keyboard, click once and select wood and open. So now we've applied our model. Now let's check this in our interactive render I'm using V-Ray 5 for SketchUp, which is a great render engine. So let me just set this up properly. Go to my asset editor, switch on interactive, use the NVIDIA AI denoiser and then click on render with V-Ray Interactive. It looks great right off the bat, but I could adjust the fabric material and also this material here and also give some reflection for the wood. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to add a image to the history so that I can see a before and after. So stop the render, create a scene as well so that I don't lose that scene. And now I need to adjust the material. So we need to add a fall off map for this chair here. So I'm going to select this fabric. So this is our textile material here. I'm going to right click, wrap in, scroll down and click on fall off. I'm going to copy this texture slot and paste it here. And again, add a color correction and increase the brightness. So what it does is, let me just reduce the brightness a bit. So what it does is it makes the tangents brighter. So generally in fabric materials, when you notice fabric material in daylight or under light, the tangents are always brighter than what you see right in front of you. So now you can see the difference when I make another render, interactive render that is. Also change this to fabric. All right, great. So now let's go back to scene six. And one last thing which I need to do is also apply some reflection for our wooden material. So go to reflection, add some reflection here. All right, looks good. And click on render with very interactive. So you can see that difference right away. I forgot to apply a material for this tread here. So let me just stop the render. Again, use the replace texture tool, hold control on the keyboard, click there, select the texture and boom, it's done. So now let's go back to scene six, render with V-Ray Interactive and see how good that looks. Awesome. So now if you want to see a before and after, I'm going to add this to the history box again. Let this be A, this will be B. And now you can see the difference by applying a fall off map. All right. So before I let you guys go, I'll import a light model as well. So let's import another model. So click on import. So I'm going to import this light model, click on open. And again, you can simplify this model. Keep it at 20% that should do click on import. If the model is modeled in the right units, it would bring in in the correct scale as well. All right. So we model our lights. And we're just going to place this in our scene, place it at the back a bit. And now we need to adjust the materials. So first thing is our stand, which is a brass material. So let's click on replace texture tool, hold control on the keyboard, click there once and select the texture, which is brass in our case. And now these materials don't come with the texture. So you may need to adjust them directly in the material editor. So I'm going to select this. I can remove this. UV texture map, which is applied, click on clear and I'm going to change the color, make it sort of black and also add some reflection. We don't need so much of glossiness, just a bit. We also need to adjust the material for our brass. So let's select this, increase the reflection a bit and also make it metallic by increasing the metalness. Finally, we can make this a uh, mesh light. So to do that, you need to enter the group. Select this globe or sphere, press G to make it a group or right click and click on make group. And then you can click on convert to mesh light. Similarly, this as well, make it a group and then convert to mesh light. All right, go back to scene five. Let me just zoom out a bit so that I can see the entire scene. I don't really need to see this top light. I can hide the stop light. I just need light from the sides and we have lights from here as well. So update and render with v Interactive. All right, so that's how simple it is to bring in models and also make 3D renders. Now, I won't be able to share these models with you because these are copyrighted from the website. If you want to download these models, you can head to dimensiva.com. They have a lot of high quality 3D models and you'll be able to use them for your scenes. However, if you want access to the studio file, you can head to the link below and download the studio file. 
There's also an additional function in Skimp where you can select high poly models and you can simplify them by clicking on simplify selection and then simply drag it to the right. So this would make a high poly model simplified and would also reduce the size of your SketchUp file. All right guys, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you like more such tutorials, please do like and subscribe and I'll be encouraged to create more awesome tutorials for y'all. Now there's a lot more content on my website which is sketchupguru.com and there's also a course called Learn Interior Design with SketchUp and V-Ray. There's an awesome offer going on so do check it out and if you'd like to learn interior design with SketchUp and V-Ray, do sign up as well. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Cheers.